Full disclosure, I will be deep diving into D&D's maths in this video. You will need to bring your thinking cap and possibly an app villa too for this one. Stay caffeinated. You walk down the hall and you come to a closed door. Now you want to try to listen at that door, so I'm going to call for a DC 16 perception check. Now, our difficulty class tells us how many beans we need in order to buy success. In this case, our DC is 16. Our level one rogue starts out with a wisdom modifier of plus three, and they have expertise and perception as well. So they start out with a plus four for a total of a plus seven to their perception skill before they roll anything. Now, this is referred to as our skill bonus. So we have our skill bonus, which tells us how many beans we start out with already in our bean account and our DC tells us how many beans we need in order to buy success. Now, the last factor, of course, is the die roll itself. The D20, in this instance, tells us how many potential extra beans might be loaned out to us from our die roll in order to help us succeed. So we need 16 to succeed. We start out with seven. Our die roll has a total of 20 that it may give us. Now, in order to figure out our chances of success, all we do is we subtract our bonus from the DC. The difference between these two numbers is what's going to tell us our percentage of success. The difference is also how many beans we're going to need our D20 to loan us. So if we take our bonus, we subtract it from the total, what we're left with is nine beans. Now if we take nine beans from our stack and add it to our bonus, that leaves us with 11 beans in this pile. 11 divided by the maximum of 20 is 0.55 or 55%. And for everybody who also knows that the D20, every side equals 5%, well then 5% times 11 is also 55%. So in this scenario, using D&D 5E, our level one rogue is gonna have about a 55% chance. Now, I know that some people probably have some power builds and they can push their perception past this, but your average player isn't gonna know about those. So straight out of the box, this is what we're looking at, about a 55% chance. Now, further down the spectrum, we have other games, skill-based games like Cyberpunk. Now, it utilizes basically the same difficulty ranges as D&D, but instead uses very, very high skill modifiers and only a D10 randomizer. Yeah, that's right, only a D10. So let's run this same scenario, but through the red engine, which emphasizes the importance of skills and less emphasis on luck. So Cyberpunk doesn't really have classes. They have a rank four Netrunner is what I'm gonna be starting with, which is essentially Cyberpunk's version of a level one character. And so our Netrunner comes up to the door. They need to see what's on the other side. They make their perception check. And of course the DC remains a DC or a DV of 16. Now our Netrunner has a max intelligence of plus eight and a perception skill of plus six, giving her a total of plus 14 at first level. Not bad, not bad at all. Our DC or DV is gonna remain the same 16, but we're already starting out with 14 beans in our bean account. So in order to buy success, we're only gonna need a loan of an additional two beans, leaving eight behind. And eight divided by 10 equals 80%. And if every side of a D10 is 10%, then 10 times eight also equals 80%. And you can clearly see how much more a skill-based game like Cyberpunk rewards you for maximizing your skills. Now, sort of in between these two systems, we have something like Pathfinder, which adds high skill bonuses to a large die size. So here at level one, at the most extreme, I've been able to get my rogue statted out for a plus 15 to their perception at level one. And of course our DC remains 16. I start with 15, which means I only need a loan of one bean from my D20. And there are no rules that say that you will fail if you roll an actual one. So in this particular situation where I have a minimum roll of one, I'm going to automatically succeed. Now, cool thing about Pathfinder is that as I level up, I would actually be adding my level to my skill bonus. So let's say that instead our DC was a DC 30. So in this case, at level one with the plus 15 to my perception, if I wanted to succeed, I would need a loan of 15 beans from my die roll, which would only give me a 25% chance to succeed. But as my level increases, I would actually be adding more beans to my bonus for every time that I level up. 
So at level one, yeah, I only have a plus 15, right? But at level six, I'd have a plus 20. At level 11, I'd have a plus 25. At level 16, I would have literally a plus 30 for what is already an auto pass. So it can really feel rewarding in a system like this to level up because your progression can feel very smooth. A level one character is gonna have a harder time achieving something of this magnitude, much harder time than a higher level character will. But the issues start to arise when the DC start to get as high as 50 or even 60. Yeah, you heard me right. And even characters will start to have skill bonuses of 30 or even 40 and beyond. And it's just, ah, it's just so many beans. Eventually, you get to the point where you can't really play this without bringing out the old TI-81. And this is a huge critique of these unbounded systems. You quickly lose the simplicity and the elegance of this or this and all of this. Lastly, we have games that rely almost completely on chance. These are games such as Dungeon Crawl Classics, which actually only uses modifier ranges of minus three to plus three, and doesn't even use skill modifiers at all, just raw ability modifiers. And it uses a D10 for unskilled checks or a D20 for skilled checks. So our thief gets to the door and they wanna make a check. Same DC as before, DC 16. And we are gonna be using the D20 for our check, not the D10 because we are skilled as a rogue. And so in this particular instance though, with a plus zero to our score, the only thing that we can do is hope that we get the entire loan of 16 from our die, which would leave us with the remainder of only four beans left giving us four divided by 20 an abysmal 20 percent chance of success though it is worthy to note the dcc is built so that characters do have terrible chances of success and that makes the luck stat more relevant so you have to rely on that so this game is literally designed for these types of odds but side by side now you can see the varying systems and how they handle chance if you're a player that often finds yourself very, very annoyed and you have your fun ruined by how often things go wrong because of bad rolls, then I actually recommend something like Cyberpunk. Something that's gonna have a high skill modifier and is gonna use a small die size. It's gonna be a lot less random and a lot less shenanigans. However, some people want something that's much looser even the D&D. And if you want something that is more random and is more shenanigan-y, then I would definitely suggest Dungeon Crawl Classics because that is a great place to land. Now, bounded accuracy limits skill progression by eliminating the addition of levels because they wanted to avoid all of this that you get in Pathfinder. The result is that they use a proficiency bonus. And the result of that proficiency bonus is that at the highest level, without magic or any kind of augmentations, the most that you're gonna be able to get your skill to is a plus 11. This is the highest stat that you're gonna be able to get, even in the late game, which means that our strongest and most capable role, at our most powerful, we're still gonna be eclipsed by the power of the D20 by nine points. So this represents the maximum skill bonus that we can get naturally without magic items or spells or anything like that. This represents the most beans that our die can give us toward success. And this represents the difference between, nine beans is the difference between our maximum stat and our d20 roll. Which means that luck or the die roll eclipses our skill even at our strongest by nine beans or about 45 percent and this is what actually equates to that one hard reality that everyone in D, D just kind of accepts and that's that your skill will not matter if you roll a bad roll like if you have a plus 11 to your skill but you still roll a two or a three you're gonna fail now the interesting thing is that with a rogue we can get this 11 up to a plus 17 with expertise making the difference between our 17 and our 20 only three beans which cuts down this huge margin of luck this weirdness where our skill can be eclipsed by our role and reduces it down to only three beans or 15 percent and i think that something is conspicuously hilarious about wizard's own admission that the rogue class has the highest satisfaction rating of any other class in DD is that because it's the class that's going to be robbed the least by a bad role 
something that's going to be further aided actually by the reliable talent class feat, which literally restricts the luck factor by 50%. You can't roll less than a 10, which actually means we would add another 10 beans to this pile. For an overwhelming plus 27 to our roll as a rogue before we even roll the die. And funnily enough, this is exactly the same kind of skill bonus, a plus 27, that we could expect to see on a character in Pathfinder or Cyberpunk. So it is beyond ironic to me that diehard D&D folks will refuse to play Pathfinder, yet by their own admission, the class that they like the most is much closer maths-wise to the kind of character that you would be playing in Pathfinder. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's just some food for thought.